Hi everyone, Ellen Jaffe Jones, and today I want to talk to you about the advantages of being a senior and being fit and being well. It's so important to have your health and wellness in check as you enter the golden years because they really can be the best years of your life, as they are for me. And I want to share with you my top five tips on maintaining your health and wellness as you become a senior or whenever you're thinking about doing that. Who was it that said, was it Art Linkletter? And you can drop down below if you know the person who actually said this, it certainly gets quoted a lot. Getting old is not for sissies, but it definitely beats the alternative. Now that assumes that things are gonna go downhill as you get older, and certainly they can, but there's so much you can do to make sure that doesn't help, uh, that doesn't happen. So many people see me at my age, 70, and go like, how do you look like that? What is your secret? What are you doing? I wanna be you when I grow up. Tell me your secrets. And so that's what I'm trying to do uh, on this channel and in this video to really nail down some of the things that have helped me not only survive, but thrive and, and actually be a faster runner than I am now uh, or than I was when I was younger. I, I'm much faster now than when I was a teenager or even in college. I hated running. Uh, my boyfriend is 15 years younger than me and people go like, really? And we look the same age. We didn't know that when we met. And so it is a fun challenge to figure out what works for you. I'm not a doctor, but I can certainly share with you what has worked for me. And it's just important to start off with knowing that age is just a number. It doesn't define who you are. And if you do the right things, whatever the right things are for you, you will find that these can definitely be the best years of your life. So first off, I wanna talk about how nutrition is maybe the most important thing you can control. And uh, if you do it, however it's right for your body, it can make the most difference. Exercise aside, I mean, exercise is wonderful and we'll talk about that. But first I wanna share with you what has worked nutritionally for me as I have aged. Now, if you're a fan of this channel and I hope you are, and if you find value, don't forget to like and subscribe. But you'll know, you know that my mom and both sisters had breast cancer and I was impacted by this starting at the age of five when my aunt died of breast cancer in our home because they just back in those days sent you home to die and it took six long excruciating months, which I remember quite well. So it traumatized me to the point where I grew up thinking, especially as my mom and then as uh, both of my sisters got breast cancer, how do I avoid this mess? We became part of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene studies and uh, up until I knew recently, whether or not I had the, the gene, because they don't tell you when you are part of a double blind study and the confidentiality and everything that's involved in research, I lived my life as if I did have the gene. So as a TV investigative reporter, I did all the research. Figuring out the truth about food and exercise became the, investiga uh, became the investigative reporting job of my life. So understanding how a diet can not only affect your body, is important, but it's also important to understand how it affects your mind. And we're really gonna dive deep into that in this because having uh, your mind over matter is just as important. Now, you may run into resistance, family members, friends who say, really, you're doing this? And you can always say, oh, my doctor prescribed it or recommended it. And more and more, doctors are recommending as a first line of defense against heart disease and diabetes, all of which my family members had, in addition to the breast cancer, that a whole foods, plant-based diet, vegan diet is the best thing you can do uh, for so many reasons. Health is just one of them, of course. You know, your mind can overcome so much. Recently, I was on a six mile hike up to a mountaintop and I got stung by a yellow jacket, as did several other people. And it was right as the hike was beginning and I thought to myself, I don't wanna destroy this, this beautiful hike. Uh, I don't wanna derail it for anybody, especially myself, but especially the people who are with me. And somebody on the hike said, you know, if I'd been with other people, they would have like been in the hospital emergency room by now. And I thought, you know, I'm not gonna let this interfere. And even though it felt like I was getting a shot, and the needle wasn't being pulled out the rest of the time, I told myself, I made my brain ignore those signals. And I focused on everything else, the beauty around me and the friendship and fellowship and just tried to put that pain out of my brain. And that's the kind of thing you can do. And I encourage you just to stay focused on what is the truth for you in terms of how you are going to stay fit and healthy. My second tip on finding health and uh, wellness in your life as you approach your senior years is to focus on wholesome food, on nutrient dense foods. And you might be wondering, well, how do you do that? First and foremost, think about foods in their natural state. When I wrote in the second of my six books, Paleo Vegan, I asked the question constantly in the book as well as to the audiences that I spoke to, 
what did Mother Nature intend? What did our ancestors really do? It wasn't like a wild boar was running through our backyard three times a day and we could successfully catch it and then eat it without getting sick and dying because food preparation just wasn't the same back then. And we really were reliant, uh, especially as the men were out hunting the elusive boar or buffalo, on the women who were back home tending the nests, tending the children. So women and children were eating what was around them. They were foraging the nuts, the seeds, the berries, the plants, things that wouldn't kill them. And we have this sense of uh, taste of bitterness so that we know not to eat things that don't taste right. That's how we have evolved. And so just understanding that foods in their whole state, their natural state, is the most important thing you can do for your body. Now, I don't have to tell you about just going to the store and reading labels. I am passionate about doing that because it is so crazy what's in food. Michael Pollan, uh, a really great nutrition writer, writes, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. If it has more than three ingredients, don't eat it. And it's that whole thing of finding out as you read labels how much sugar is in everything. Often sugar, and the, the food companies can get away with doing it, is in three different ingredients like molasses, like corn syrup, even high fructose corn syrup, which is still a thing, cane sugar, just so many different forms of sugar. And when you look at MRIs, and there are actually doctors who run around the country doing this, uh, sugar lights up your brain more than cocaine does in terms of exciting our brains and keeping us addicted. And so once you get sugar out of your life, you're going to be able to taste, taste the natural sugars and even salt in food. It's really incredible how much Mother Nature made sure that we would keep coming back for more. And there's plenty of natural sugars in food. So I don't mean that you give up eating whole foods and, and sugar that would be in fruits, for example. Maybe you don't want to make a steady diet of pineapple, which has more sugar in it than other produce. But certainly Mother Nature wanted to make sure that we kept coming back for more. And part of understanding this is that human milk, human mammalian milk, has more uh, sugar in it than any other mammal's milk. And I know this because I was uh, an accredited Leche League leader where I volunteered to help other human mothers learn how to breastfeed because we're not around other breastfeeding moms. And so sometimes we need a little uh, instruction on how to do that. But as part of that, I would get all this research and just was astounded to understand that we don't give up that sweet tooth once we reach the theoretical age of weaning. Now, whether you're breastfed or not, it doesn't matter. It's just that we are born with this incredible sweet tooth. And the trick becomes, how do we satisfy that after the theoretical age of weaning? Two, three, four, whatever it is. And by the way, the average age of weaning worldwide is four, which means that there are some cultures of the world who are breastfeeding way beyond the age of four. But Point being is it is okay to eat foods in their natural states and sugar in the form of fruit, uh, fructose, that is okay. It's when we extract that fructose from the sugar and don't eat it with all the other fiber and nutrients uh, where it becomes a problem. So nutrient dense foods, that's gonna mean not only the fruits, but vegetables, and there's so many different kinds of vegetables. If you don't like one, try another. And of course, whole grain foods are very good for us, rich in the B vitamins and lots of fiber. We don't have, as vegans, a protein deficiency problem. I mean, do you know anybody who's been diagnosed with that? Do you know anybody who's died of a protein deficiency? Have you been to the protein deficiency ward of the hospital? Nope, didn't think so. However, many people are dying every day from a lack of fiber, because if you don't have enough fiber, your colon then has lots of time to do things with those toxic uh, chemicals that your body is ingesting, whether it's in the form of pesticides or herbicides. Uh, you often get stuck with colon blockages like I had at the age of 28, almost died of one, and doctors said I would need to be on medication the rest of my life. Totally unnecessary if you're eating enough fiber. The typical standard American diet has maybe 10 to 15 grams of fiber, but if you are eating a whole foods vegan diet, you're getting anywhere from 40 to 60 grams of fiber. And as long as you are drinking enough fluids to swish it along like the Roto-Rooter man, you are not gonna have any kinds of uh, colon issues. Your, your microbiome will be flourishing and the toxins will just be going right through your system, hopefully, and not have much time to uh, putrefy and cause a problem in the, in the form of colon cancer, for example, in that part of your body. So important to eat lots of high fiber foods. It also flushes fat out of your body and that's why many vegans are at a healthy weight. It doesn't guarantee that you're not gonna have any problems, but it certainly gives you a great head start. And also just being able to live this kind of lifestyle, it's going to rev up your immunity. That's what a healthy microbiome does. And with all that fiber from beans and whole grains, you are in theory not gonna have issues with your colon blocking up and creating problems of constipation uh, or many issues that can uh, develop in your colon if you don't have enough fiber and fluids 
moving things along. You know, transit time, if you've ever noticed in a dog, is three hours. And that means from the time they eat something to the time it comes out. In humans, it's about 11 to 14 hours if you eat enough fiber and liquid to move things along. If you don't, it can be two or three days before what goes in comes out, and that can be very problematic. The third thing I want to talk to you about is physical exercise. And we're talking way beyond cardio. And I want to share with you some things you can do at your desk. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to mention that going for a walk two or three times a day, or even just one time a day, Hi everyone, for a few minutes, I'm Ellen it's Jaffe all Jones, former two-time Emmy-winning TV and investigator. Getting out there, especially three times a day after you eat, it's so good for your digestive system. It's so good for your blood flow and your heart and everything else. So if you can do that, great. Sometimes if you're just sitting at your desk and you, you're kind of like having a mental block or you're in a fog, funk, just go outside and take a minute walk. You'd be amazed at how much that will help your clarity. When I was studying for my real estate exam, we would have breaks and a lot of people would just sit around and not do anything or look through their books. And I would make sure I would go out and just take a 60 second run around the block and I was amazed at how much more focused I was when I came back. So those are things that can help you just kind of uh, get out and do some things as a senior that won't hurt you. Uh, and you know, walking is definitely a great thing to incorporate into your daily routine if you aren't already. Now there's some other things I wanna share with you. If you are sitting at your desk, you can get one of these things. It's called a kettlebell and you can stand up and do lots of exercises. I have plenty of exercise routines on different parts of my channel here. But this is just something that doesn't take too much effort. You can expand your range of motion as seniors. We don't want to overdo our range of motion. And this is just a five pound weight. So not a lot of strenuous stuff going on there. Or you can get a 10 pound weight and respect your range of motion. If you have shoulder issues, maybe you want to keep with the lower rate, the lower weights of two, three, five pounds. But these are the kinds of things you can do just sitting at your desk. And these kinds of things can really break up the monotony of the day. And they're also going to keep your biceps and your triceps and everything else connected in good shape. Important when you use weights, which are very good for trying to combat osteoporosis, make sure you keep your core, your tummy nice and tight so that you are doing more than just an upper body workout. But there's so many things you can do. Just mix it up and don't get bored. Another thing you can do if you have any trigger points or sore spots in your body, and of course this is good for eye-hand coordination, but you can rub these therapy balls in different spots on your body just to create blood flow and to give yourself a little self-massage. So this ball has little bumps on it, so you can step on it, you can rub it on your thighs, your hamstrings, your calves, anywhere where you want to relieve some tension. And beyond that, we have these different kinds of um, trigger point bars that you can get almost anywhere, but they just, they're massage bars that can help different parts of your body. I do this especially on my hamstrings after I've come back from a run and done all my stretching and encourage you to do lots of yoga stretches. Again, you can look elsewhere on my channel for that. But they make these these sticks, as they're called, you can get them at running stores, physical therapists have them. This one, because it has all these lumpy round discs on them, can really get into the muscle, especially if you press hard and release the lactic acid that builds up after strenuous exercise in particular, whatever strenuous means for you. And then finally, in relaxing, you know, we work at our computers so much and we'll probably, before we actually uh, leave the planet, our hands will maybe in those kind of curled up positions. But these little stress balls, aside from relieving stress, they can give your fingers a workout that maybe you're not getting elsewhere in your life because who goes to a gym and does this, right? I did take a water aerobics class once where they went through a routine and I actually instructed it myself where you can do all these kinds of uh, stretches with your fingers and even things like this that just get the blood flowing in parts of your body where you think you wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't be uh, working out. Um, generally, when you think about working out, you don't think about your hands. So all of this contributes to longevity. And if there's any message that I want to relay to you, and maybe you'll hear me say this a bazillion times on this channel, just keep moving. Don't ever stop. That is the message of the Blue Zones. That is the message of athletes who compete at the National Senior Games, where I have for many years, 
it doesn't really matter what you do, just keep moving. Even training for track. I always, because I'm a TV reporter still at heart, asking lots and lots of questions. And I'm very curious, it's one of the reasons I'm a certified personal trainer, what works for people. And women in my age group, who believe it or not, are faster than me. Some of them don't really do regular workouts. One of them just runs a 5K every few days, and I don't need a race. She just runs that distance, about 3.1 miles. Another woman just runs 800 meters between her house and her mother's house, and her mother's like close to 100. So there's all things that work, and um, <clears throat> something works, nothing doesn't, and that's just really an important thing to consider. The fifth and final thing I want to talk about for health and wellness and making sure that your golden years are the best lives you can possibly live is getting regular checkout, checkups. Now, some people may say, oh, I don't like doctors. Well, I don't either. If you have followed me, you know that I was misdiagnosed with leukemia and went and got a second opinion and the, this, the Moffitt Cancer Clinic up in Tampa, a very well-known, respected cancer center said, you don't have cancer. You couldn't be doing all this running and racing and placing in your age group if you had that kind of cancer. Their test was wrong. They shouldn't have used that specific test for that specific kind of cancer. So sometimes we can get overdiagnosed, and I get it. On the other hand, it is important to get a baseline. Medicare often will pay for a physical every year, and you should do that just so you know what's going on. You can make a decision about whether or not you want to get treatment for something or whether you should get medication for osteoporosis, for example. Now, runners I know generally have advised me not to go that route because there can be some side effects that potentially could be uh, career ending with running. And so I'm just saying for myself, that is a choice I have made. I am borderline osteoporosis and have actually through other alternative means like OsteoStrong, and you can Google that, have reversed my osteoporosis on a DEXA scan. So there are different things you can do that don't necessarily involve medication. So look for different options if you get diagnosed with one of those bad babies. Um, just get a you know, read up, Google it. I know Dr. Google is not the doctor to end all diagnosis uh, or you know treatments, but you know just be an educated consumer. It's really important to do that. And if your general practitioner says you need to go to a specialist, definitely follow their advice. And again, you can decide at that point if you want to go down certain rabbit holes. The other thing you might want to consider are vitamins and supplements. Jury's still out. You know, there are varying degrees of success with different studies and how well these things work. And you just have to work with your healthcare professional to see if it's right for you. Personally, I have taken a multivitamin most of my adult life because I've been a runner. And my mom used to say, you can't you know, burn the candle at both ends. It's like, well, why not? <laughs> it's fun, mom. So a multivitamin has always been my insurance policy because running as much as I do can, be, can cause oxidative stress. So I wanna make sure my recovery through natural foods, of course, and stretching and relaxing and doing all the things we need to do. Um, you know, I forgot to mention meditation is part of relaxing and, and me good mental health and staying positively focused. So however you do that, all good. But uh, a multivitamin really can be um, a good thing. Ve some vegans will say, well, don't, don't we only need vitamin B12? Mm. Some doctors will say that, but uh, a multivitamin will have B12 in it, but uh, sometimes as we age, we need more calcium, we need more vitamin D, which can be made by sun production acting on your skin. Uh, but if you aren't out in the sun, or if you know, you're kind of dark and tan like me, uh, sometimes the sun will have a difficult time penetrating that skin to produce vitamin D in your, in your body, so you may need to supplement. Again, these are, easy to get tests for, uh, vitamin D and B12, and anything else your doctor may be concerned about, there's a test for that. So get a, base, get a baseline and know where you are. The fourth tip I wanna share with you about health, wellness, and longevity is mental health. It's kind of overlooked because people think, uh, you know, who has time to deal with that? And if you're physically fit, then your brain's gonna follow in line. And to some extent, that is true, that it's all about blood flow. So when you are getting your heart pumping, your blood is flowing and it goes to all of your organs, including your brain, one of our biggest organs, and certainly an organ that is the most filled with water, believe it or not, about 70% of our brains is water. So be sure you're drinking enough water, staying hydrated, and keep in mind that things like coffee and alcohol dehydrate. So if you're drinking those two bad babies, then make sure you're drinking twice as much fluid like water uh, to compensate for that and to keep yourself hydrated. Because uh, chronic hydration is one of 
the most underdiagnosed conditions of seniors, and it can lead to migraines or any kind of headache, even chest pain, which is really incredible when you think about it. And if you don't get enough water, your body is going to search for it in other places like your, your brain. And so if you get a headache, it may be because you don't have enough water floating around up there. So drink some water and see if it goes away. As far as our mind goes, it's important to stay sharp and mentally acute. Now, in recent years, there's been a lot of press given to things like crossword puzzles and mind games that you can, you can play to keep things actually sharp. Uh, does it work? You know, there's somewhat of a mixed jury out there, but it is just important to, to use your brain however you can. I was one of the early adopters of Words with Friends, so much so that uh, Sometimes people would accuse me of cheating, and there's actually a, a website, Words with Friends Cheat, which you can use, but why would you do that if you're trying to keep your brain sharp? It, the, the big deal is to just challenge yourself to see if you can come up with words that other people can't. And there are different apps and different games out there you can play like that. But for me, somebody who's a wordsmith, uh, after having written six health and fitness books of my own, I just like kind of come to that naturally. I do play Sudoku, which is the math version of that, uh, and you can do that in paper books, uh, magazine type formats, or you can get an app online. And especially when I'm traveling uh, in a plane, which I did a lot on book tour, some of these things you needed Wi-Fi for, and if the plane didn't have it, um, you were kind of stuck with whatever you had on your phone. And Sudoku was one of the few apps I could use without needing Wi-Fi. So I learned to play that, and it's, it's kind of fun. But as a wordsmith, I much prefer the Words with Friends uh, and those kinds of apps. And some of them now you can play. They finally have come up with ways where you don't need to have Wi-Fi. And I love that. So I play it a lot less now because, it's just like with anything, you kind of outgrow them and you, as part of the aging process, whatever age you are, my least favorite word in the English language is boring. And I have moved on to other apps, other things, uh, to keep my brain and interest sharp. I don't want us to forget about the lost art of reading. You know, I mentioned books. Do you remember those? <laughs> I mean, the really sad thing is we are so used to watching videos now, here we are, and reading is becoming such a thing of the past, and yet it's really important in the evolutionary process how our brains have evolved to be able to develop intelligence through the art of reading. So I encourage you to do that, even if it's through a, go a Google search. The last part of mental health is focusing on socialization. Now, many people have said, well, social media, that's social. Isn't that good enough? Yeah, no, not so much. And it is healthy to be a part of certain groups or activities. For example, there's a Facebook page called Dancing on the Beach that I belong to, and they have actual meetups on the beach at sunset where volunteer dancers will help you learn how to do the salsa or the tango or dances like that. Now, how cool is that? So. The human connection is still very important. Try to eat meals with other people if you can. Socialization is how our brains have developed for our survival. So just try and connect with other people in real life as much as you can. I have participated in groups like Get Set Up, which helps people online take classes and just hang out because so many seniors as we age are isolated and don't have other people to connect with. So it's just social media and all the different platforms like that can serve an important role, but just make sure that you try and get out there and really socialize with other people. We have five senses, our sight, our ears, our mouth, our sense of smell and touch. And when we're with other people, you know, not that we're necessarily gonna be touching other people, but when we hug other people, when we hug an animal, pet an animal, our bodies release endorphins, the feel good hormones like oxytocin and relaxin and it just makes us happier. So understand how this is not an optional thing, that our brains which release these hormones need to be stimulated, and often it just doesn't happen with the click of a phone. So find a way to get out there. There's a website called Meetup, and you can find meetups. These are groups that come together, like the dancing group, uh, but any interest you have, sailing, walking, hiking, those are all meetups in your local neighborhoods, and you can find them online and then make it a priority to, to actually just show up. So in conclusion, making sure that you are 
entering the golden years and your senior years with the optimal amount of health and wellness. Make sure that you got the right nutrition. And of course, you know my bias there. I'm, I'm not on any medications. So eating a whole foods, plant-based, vegan diet has been the best that's worked for me. I have dodged all the genetic bullets of our family for the most part that have allowed me to keep running and enjoy my life the way I want to. Make sure you're eating nutrient-dense foods, foods in their natural state. Get plenty of physical exercise, not just cardio, but everything else, strength training, yoga, stretching, all these great forms of exercise. There's so many different things that you can do. And make sure your mental health is uh, just on target as well. If you need to talk to a therapist, there's so many free things out there now that allow you to do that. Uh, so make sure that your mental health is just as good as your physical health, however you define that. And then do all the kinds of things for preventative medicine that makes sense. Get your checkups, take vitamins or supplements if you want to. If you're not eating the nine fruits and vegetables a day, maybe a supplement makes sense for you. All right, if you have found this information useful and of value, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. I'm always happy to try and answer them. And if I don't, I will say as a former reporter, I don't know, but I'll find out and um, I just thank you very much for being here and we hope to see you in the next one. Gotta run.